Hey everybody, this is Larry. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let me know how you're doing this problem. I'm gonna solve it live right about now. All right, cool. Uh, 391, perfect rectangle. Given n axis aligned rectangle where n is greater than zero, determine if they're all together form uh, an exact cover of a rectangular area or region. Each rectangular region is uh, represented as a bottom left point and a top right point. For example, a unit square is represented 1, 1, 2, 3, okay. Uh, so for Return true. All five rectangles form the exit of a, of a rectangular region. Okay. What are the constraints? Uh, hmm. Excuse me. Huh? No. Um, I mean, I think if n is smaller, uh, or uh, if the number represented in n is smaller, then we can, uh, whatchamacallit, then we can, um, we can just draw a thing, draw it out. Um, and we still can, I think. I think my intuition here is, uh, my intuition here is basically just put it in a grid and then just check for it. Uh, that would be like n square. Um, the kind of the thing that you might have to look out for um, is is that some of these numbers can be really big. Uh, but in this case, you you only need you only need uh, you only need to care about it being a rectangle and not um, not um, what we call it a square or anything other shape, uh, and its axis aligned. So what you can do is use a technique called um, I forget what it's called, but it's just comp uh, coordinate co compression or something like that. I don't think that's the official name, but you can compress the coordinates so that it fits. And then, um, because at most you can have n unique, um, well, I guess two times n, but O of n unique uh, x axis points and also n unique, or O of n unique y axis points, uh, th then you could construct an n square um, rectangle. So yeah, so let's let's do that then. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, well, let's start doing that, and then we'll kind of play around with it in a bit. Mm. Y and X and Y in rectangles. Um, and now let's just uh, if X is equal to Also, same for y. And then now we want to put that in a in our hash table. So actually, let's just do um, x lookup is equal to uh, for we want to enumerate this. Let me know if this gets too coffee. <laughs> uh, index and x. Um, and then we just do x is equal to i. Okay, for that. And same for here. Oh, oops. Okay. Um, Yeah. Okay. And then now we can just um now we can just uh well let's just a x is equal to line of x lookup. Uh m is equal to line of y lookup. And now we can construct a grid. Um grid is equal to times n 
now m for range n and then now we can just go through uh, this again um, okay so for uh, how do I put it? Uh, let's say current x in range of uh, uh, s x to e x plus one. Uh, except for now, we want the x lookup version of this. Uh, and then the same for uh, for the y. And then now we just add plus one. And then now, ideally, every grid should be filled. So now we could just do a symbol uh, for Roman grid. For call in row or cell, I guess. Uh, if so, it's not equal to one. Return false because if it's either zero or even multiple, then it's true, right? Let's kind of see. I feel like I'm. Don't know. Hmm. Annoying to copy test cases. Is that right, at least? Yeah, okay, so it's well. <laughs> right, let's take a look. Wait, let me put in the code for the test cases first. Did I do the same one now? It's slightly different. I think probably let's print out the grid. Oh, hmm. I think I did this a little bit off. Uh, so okay, maybe I don't need a plus one on this because we don't actually do that cell. Okay, that's fine. Oh, I. Oh no. Well, everything is false. Right. Oh, am I off by one then? I guess so. That makes it. That, I'm mostly done. I mean, th this is good enough to print. Um. Mm, uh, okay. so we never. We never used the uh, the max one. Um, so I'm conflating. Uh, so what what's happening is that I'm conflating the points and the square, and it's like, and that's essentially what I'm doing. Uh, but okay, let's submit. I wish you good luck. Let me just some. Uh, oh, one thing that I should have tested was a big number. I think that's what I was saying to myself, and I forgot. Why is this so slow? Though maybe I get time limited. Oh, okay. Well, well, it's still very slow, but um, hmm. is there a better way? I guess there's probably a better way. Um, well, if nothing else, I could return early. I think that's... I was thinking about it, but I thought that that may be a little bit too slow to kind of keep on assessing it. But actually, I probably could have just done it here, and then that would save some of the... Like if you have certain cases where... Um, okay, let's just do it. Let's just see if that is good enough. Because this is barely good enough. Um, well, mm, 
Okay. Let's try that again. Oh. Well, I took out the print. Right? That would have timed out if I kept the print back in, actually. But, hmm. I do use a lot of memory. Well, okay, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. So, uh, huh, that is interesting. So, yes, I barely squeezed in. But, uh, so let me give it a second to think where I could. I mean, I definitely should be able to do it better, faster. But, um, I mean, I think some of it is a little bit tricky when they don't tell you what the N is, uh, and also just the constraint of the palm because then I don't know necessarily how to do it. But um, but that said, it did run uh, fast enough, so uh, that's really barely not. But I feel like nine seconds is probably not uh, a <laughs> not in the spirit of uh, this palm. Uh, can I do a little bit better? I was hoping that the if statement would have maybe maybe the case is a little bit weird, and that if I have an if statement, then um, then you get the overlapping case very quickly. Um, but hmm. and I definitely still end up using a lot of memory, two hundred fifty three max. I for, I forget what the percentile is, but but it is not great. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to read this. Uh, but, okay. Uh, still problem solved. Uh, <laughs> right? Uh, also, obviously, if I used a better, uh, or faster language, maybe it's a little bit better. But, that's not a big deal. Hmm. Is there a better way to solve this? What is the easy way? <laughs> and again, it really depends on n as well, right? Because you can check the overlap case, like as a pre uh, pre processing step, if n is uh, if n is small enough, uh, and that because that's n square, uh, but it's unclear, so that it makes it a little bit tricky to kind of uh, analyze this problem as a result. Um, or like, just think about how to strategy. But, um, but hmm, can I do, let me think about the strategies. So uh, another thing that I can do is probably sweep line. Because uh, that seems pretty straightforward to do sweep, sweep line. Um, or at least like it will, it will remove one of the dimensions uh, because you could just do a sweep on one of them and then you could even do like very naive, like kind of like this, uh, just take, taking on a boolean, well not a boolean, I guess an int um, of all the things that are in it. I feel like I've done that problem actually. So yeah, so actually you could, what I, if I was a little bit not lazy, I would have definitely, uh, <laughs> oh, bye now too. Um, yeah, I, I guess there's a rolling window, uh, or what you call it, um, a sweep line algorithm or line sweep algorithm uh, would probably be, well, I mean, it'll make it uh, n log n. Um, and then you could sweep in both directions if you like, uh, and then just or keeping track of the current uh, segments, if you want to call it that, uh, on the on the on either the, well, you sweep on the x and then you keep the line segments on the y and then just making sure that there, there are no overlaps and there are no gaps and I think that should be okay. Um, hmm. And you pop them out and you have to pop them back in. Yeah, okay. I think that's how I would do it. But uh, but I guess my solution somehow is fast enough, which is a little crazy. But um. <laughs> 